What's up everyone and welcome back to my channel. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be sharing how I got into coding and how I became an emo developer. If that interests you, stick around. And if not, then maybe you can check out my other content and like and subscribe. <laughs> I don't have uh, any fancy intro clips, but uh, I'm just going to start and jump right into it. When I first started learning or got interested in uh, coding, I came across Chris Sean's YouTube videos. And one of his videos, he had a s how to become a s uh, or how to become a web developer within six months and how much you can earn as a web developer. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I got interested in that, to be honest. And as soon as I started HTML and CSS, I learned that it's about problem solving and I loved it. I fell in love with it. And um, so after watching Chris Sean's video, I did my research and how I can learn HTML and CSS. And I came across Code with Mosh. So I bought one of his uh, courses. And after two months, I get a, got a good grasp on HTML and CSS. So I jumped right into JavaScript. I took a uh, free code camp uh, courses and uh, I bought one of Brad uh, Traversy's JS course. And after that, I felt uh, lost. Uh, I didn't know how to look for a job or what I needed to get a job and um, what projects I needed to work on. I had no direction at all. And I came across uh, Coding Face uh, YouTube videos and I saw two uh, before. I even thought about uh, joining his platform. He had a sale going on, and this was around, actually, this was around uh, October of last year. And it was on Halloween night where I bought the Diamond membership. And I'm like, I have, I have, I'm, I'm lost. Uh, I don't know what direction to take or, or what and I saw coding faces platform he had everything in order like yeah you know do content editing and email developer and front end and back end so I was like you know there's direction right there <clears throat> and so I put the trigger in and I I bought the diamond membership and I checked out all his courses I attended his Monday meetings it was pretty cool attending his for uh, my first one because uh, everyone was sharing their projects, uh, what they were working on, and they were showing their progress. Their progress, and if you know, they also talked about if they're you know stuck on something. They asked Joe, and I thought that was pretty cool. And I was kind of a little shy on saying what's up to everyone, um, but I got over it. I still have. Um, I'm still. Uh, I'm still nervous uh, every time on every Monday meeting. I'm not. Don't ask me why. But um, so, yeah, then I started taking Karen's Wednesday workshop meetings, uh, which I learned a lot from. Thank you, Karen. Uh, she taught me how to build emails. That was like the biggest thing that I learned from her was uh, how to build emails. She broke it down or I can. It just clicked for me. And um so yeah, and the only thing that was holding holding me back, uh, when I was applying for for jobs, or when I after I got my portfolio up, um, so every time I I had a project, I went to the Monday meetings, and I showed them like, all right, you know, I got this project. What do you, what, you know? What do you think? He's like, all right, you know, remove this or add this or just change this. And I'm like, all right, you know, I this is solid, like a solid project to put on my portfolio. And I'm like, yeah. So I put it on and I just started building and just working on it, just tweaking little things here and there just to, you know, make it right. And finally, I was happy enough where I was confident in my portfolio. And the only thing was my resume. I had a trouble with my resume. And so I went on Fiverr this first time. And it didn't go well to me. It, it wasn't what I expected. I should have done more research on the person. Uh, if they had like a tech industry uh, background or whatever. And so luckily in one of the money meetings, someone suggested I even hurt uh, to do my resume. And yeah, 
I contacted him. He did a killer resume for me, and and after that, I started getting interviews, started getting uh, phone interviews, and just yeah, I was just doing my best on getting a, a position. I started uh, networking on LinkedIn. I uh, was hearing people here and there. I, I attended a couple of meetings on LinkedIn. They were talking about how to make your LinkedIn profile attractive to other recruiters. And so I was taking their information, their advice, and I was, all right, I'm building my uh, LinkedIn profile. And uh, until I was happy with it, I'm like, what else can I do to stand out? And I started a YouTube channel and, um, and the YouTube channel, um, I did some tutorials, whatever I could think of just to put out there and just put my name out there. And yeah, I really like creating content, um, just to stand out. And, and like I said, uh, networking is huge. I, I heard everyone talking about networking, network, network, network. And so that's what I did after I, I, um, worked on my profile I invited everyone and their mama and luckily I did because that's how I got this position I'm currently working for um, there's one day on Veterans Day last year uh, some guy named Andrew uh, one of my connections from LinkedIn he messaged me he's like hey man I recommended you for a company for email role and he's all excited and like, you're going to kill it. He's like, you're going to kill this position. I'm like, cool, man. And I didn't know that he worked there and he got another job and he, he left that. It was a contract job. And so I was like, excited too. I'm like, all right, you know, um, so what's going to happen? He's like, all right, you know, this recruiter is going to contact you tomorrow, which uh, Veterans Day last year fell on a Saturday. And the recruiter contacted me on a Sunday and she contacted me. And we set up a phone interview for Monday. We had the phone interview. I just talked about, you know, what I can do, what um, skills I have. And she's like, all right, let me get, uh, let me contact the, the company to see if they have time for interview tomorrow, which is uh, Tuesday. And so, yeah, we set the interview up. It was uh, around 2.30 p.m. I was excited. And I'm like, this could be it. So I got to prepare. And I prepared, I got my notes, I did a research on the company, I had my portfolio up, I had my resume up, and I put on my blue shirt, a long sleeve shirt, a nice shirt with uh, pants and shoes, of course. I was ready. I was ready to tackle this, uh, this obstacle. And so, yeah, uh, we started the interview. Everything went well, and I was very surprised they liked a project for my portfolio, which is uh, a target transactional uh, email. And I wasn't, I was so surprised they liked that. And, but that's what they, they were looking for. So you never know. And it's funny because I was going to kill that project, you know, and just remove it from my portfolio. And luckily I didn't. And, 30, 30 to 35 minutes after the interview, I received a message from the recruiter uh, sending me all these papers to sign. I was like, why is she sending me papers? She didn't tell me anything. She was just sending me these papers. I was like, what the hell? I'm like, does that mean that I got the job? I didn't want to give my hopes up, you know? And so she explained what the papers were and everything. And I asked her, I'm like, does this mean that I got the job? And she's like, yes, you got the job. I was like, oh, like if I won the Super Bowl or the a championship. And <laughs> so I was so excited. And I the first person I called to tell the great news was my girlfriend. And she didn't answer. <laughs> I was like one of the coolest moments of my life. And she didn't answer, but she was busy at the store. And she got back to me. I told her the great news. I got the job and she was excited for me and uh, I got emotional because just thinking about the all the hard work I put in and all those just thinking about the, all the rejection emails and I'm like, 
the, almost a whole year of applying rejection, applying rejected, applied rejection. It was a couple of moments where I thought that I could have the position, but it didn't fall through. But I kept my head down and kept the learning, tweaking my portfolio, whatever I had to do. I bought some other course on how to look for jobs on LinkedIn and how to network and everything. And but yeah, I oh man, I was so excited. I was on cloud nine. I wanted to jump up and I want to. I thought I was gonna fly like Superman. <laughs> And I, I told my family too, and they were excited. I told my friends, they were excited. And Andrew was especially excited that I got the job, and he knew it. And um, so, yeah, and I got hired. It's a contract job, but I found out last week, it's supposed to be a three month uh, contract, but I found out last week that they're going to extend my time to September. So, you know, thank you. God. And so, yeah, and there's other opportunities that Andrew uh, shoot me up uh, or is helping me out with just in case that, you know, they stop, uh, ex you know, they don't extend my time with this current position. But I'm, I'm very grateful. And I just want to thank uh, everyone that helped me out to get to this point that lift me up when I was down. Um, like Joe and coding phase, like, man, dude, just uh, keep on going. You have the skills. Don't worry. Just keep on going. He said, and yeah. And everybody else was like, yeah, your time will come. Your time will come. And I'm like, when, <laughs> but yeah, um, it's funny because every time I apply to a job, I tell you up, um, on a piece of paper, how many jobs I applied for and I had like four or five pages full of tally marks and and I told myself too, just I don't. When I used to go out walking my dogs, I'm an emo developer. I'm an emo developer. I'm gonna be an emo developer. I even wrote it on my whiteboard. I don't even know if you see it. And I wrote it on a piece of papers, and I put those pe uh, papers inside my pillowcase, and just prayed every night to God and like you know make this. I I want this, you know, and and my prayers were answered. And I'm really grateful for this position. And I I learned a lot from this process. And I'm in. <laughs> I'm in. I'm in. They can't take me out now. It's only up from here. So, um, but yeah, I feel really grateful. And if you're even thinking about, you know, getting into this industry or uh, maybe you're already in this, uh, like on the journey, uh, I just just keep on the be patient be consistent and never give up and because your time will come that's what they always tell me like your time will come and it's true and it came true man i'm really excited uh for the future and i just love it i i'm just trying to think of different projects i i can do my issue is like not focusing on one thing now. Like I want to learn this. I want to learn that. I I want maybe I should do a project of that. I have some projects in mind to do, and uh, for me myself, so it can um, I don't know. Maybe I could share it with you guys later on. Um, that's it. That's uh my journey. Um, I want to share uh some books. Um, I don't know if you guys are interested in the reading, but uh this. I just want to share it. So I bought these books uh, when I was uh, learning how to code, and I was learning PHP in my SQL, and I f I thought it was fascinating. Uh, the, the you know uh, the back end was uh, fascinating, and I still want to learn more about PHP and my SQL. And um, so then after that, I I invested in uh, the rest of the <laughs> the books that they have. John Duckett. So that's this one, HTML, CSS, and the JavaScript, uh, jQuery. It's pretty cool. Um, really good uh, information that they have here. Um, 
I tell you, and they have little exercises, little examples. Um, let me just share the, you can see, like things like this, like examples. I don't know if you can see it through the glare. But yeah, um, I use these as reference. Um, aside from these books, I'm just reading. I'm not sure if you guys are interested in reading uh, books, but my goal for this year was uh, is uh, reading a book every month. So currently I'm reading a uh, Raising a Modern Day Knight by Robert Lewis. So here's the book. It's a good book, especially if you have uh, kids, especially specifically if you have a son. Uh, it's a really good book. I don't have any kids at the moment. But um, for the next month, I'm um, thinking about between these three. So here, I'll just show you. The first one option is David Goggins. Come on now. I read his first book, Can't Hurt Me. Uh, that was really fascinating and really motivational. And I can't wait to read this. So maybe I start with this next month. Um, the next one is Prepared by Micah Glover. Um, let me just show you. Oh, that way, I believe. That's pretty cool. And um, after that, uh, another option is this one. And it's crazy because all these books came from the same uh, podcast that I listen to is uh, the Sean Ryan show. A really good podcast. I suggest, you know, listening to that. And, um, but yeah. Uh, like again, if you're thinking about uh, getting into the industry, if you want to contact me, uh, I'll put information so you can, uh, you know, shoot me a question or in the, in the comments. I'd love to hear from you guys. You know, I, I'm thankful for all the subscribers. Uh, again, uh, my goal is for this uh, year is to get 100 subscribers by the end of July. Let's make it that half of a year. Let's make it a hundred and uh, maybe 200 by the end of the year. And, um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, just like and subscribe, you know what to do. And I'll see you on the next video. Bye.